Let's talk about two major forces in the space race that are gunning hard to colonize the planet Mars, Elon Musk and the People's Republic of China. We all know that Elon basically called first dibs on the red planet when he founded SpaceX 20 years ago. His plan quickly evolved from sending a greenhouse full of plants to the surface and has now become a scheme to populate Mars with a self-sustaining city of 1 million people that would essentially make humanity a multi-planetary civilization and push us through the Great Filter. And to accomplish this, Elon and SpaceX are hard at work building prototypes for the largest and most powerful rocket ship ever created a starship that will carry humans along with massive amounts of cargo to the planet Mars. Meanwhile, the Chinese have been ramping their space program at an incredible pace. It was 19 years ago when China put their first astronaut into orbit around the Earth, and in the time since then, the nation has risen to become a global leader in space exploration. While the old guard of America and Russia largely stagnated in the 21st century, the Chinese pushed forward to establish their own satellite infrastructure, implement a robot exploration campaign on the moon, design and construct a brand new space station, and now most recently, they've set their sights on Mars as well. So, we've got two incredibly wealthy and well-resourced players moving towards the same goal. What might that look like if everything goes according to plan? How would Elon Musk's vision of Mars compare with China's? Let's talk about it. This is the Space Race. We'll start off with the Chinese side of things, mostly because they're not as out in the open and boisterous about their plans as Elon Musk. And unlike Elon, China has already started development on what could eventually become their Mars base. So there are actually two prototype Mars bases in China right now. They're both constructed in remote areas of the northern desert that are eerily similar to the landscape of Mars and they make for a pretty convincing simulation of what life on Mars would look like. Mars base number one is located in Gansu, China. This is at the edge of the Gobi Desert that stretches north into Mongolia. This is China's first Mars simulation base, and it looks exactly like something straight out of a science fiction movie. This facility was built in 2019 at a cost of $61 million. The Chinese publicized the Mars base by setting a reality TV show there, where celebrities were trained by real Chinese astronauts and scientists to complete fictional space missions. It's now used as a center for education and tourism, basically to inspire the younger generation to a career in the space program where they can brave the journey to a real Mars base in the future. And this simulation base is pretty slick. They've got a big, comfortable sleeping quarters, a fancy command center with giant curving screens, they're growing wheat crops indoors, and have basically every amenity you would need. Outside is a simulated Mars environment with fancy spacesuits, a giant exploration vehicle, rovers, a landed crew capsule, and, for some reason, the black monolith slab from 2001, A Space Odyssey. Only natural to have Kubrick fans on a project like that. Anyway, Mars Base Number 1 is like the hype version of China's space colonizing mission. It's more like a themed hotel than anything, which makes sense if you're going to convince people to fly to Mars with the likely prospect of dying millions of miles away from home on a cold, dead, alien world, then this is probably the best way to ease them into it. And then we have Mars Camp. This is a bit more realistic, utilitarian take on China's first space colony. Mars Camp is even further into the desert of northwestern China, in one of the most remote areas of the country, and virtually uninhabited. The place even has the same red tint as the planet Mars. Mars Camp is essentially a bunch of shipping containers all cobbled together. 
It lacks the high ceilings, bubble domes, and colorful lighting of the Mars Base 1, but Mars Camp is definitely a more realistic vision of what the first swing at a space colony might look like. The Chinese refer to the site as a place for scientific learning and what they call patriotic education for young pioneers. So again, training the next generation to happily risk their lives in space on an unprecedented colonization mission for the glory of the nation. The Chinese have already laid out a fairly aggressive plan for their presence on the planet Mars. Obviously, they already have the Tianwen rover and orbiter mission in progress right now, and that is going to be followed up with several more robotic exploration missions over the coming decade. The main purpose of China's robot exploration of Mars will be to collect samples for study and to scout out ideal landing sites and future base locations. China expects to have gathered all of the necessary data by 2033, which is when they plan to send the first crewed mission to the Red Planet. And this isn't going to be a simple matter of planting the flag and then calling it a day. China has a schedule to land people on Mars again in 2035, 2037, 2041, and 2043. There hasn't been a whole lot of details released, but we know that the Chinese intended to use nuclear-powered spaceships to allow the first crews to travel to Mars. This is an idea that NASA is exploring as well. A nuclear thermal rocket engine will have about twice the efficiency of a standard chemical rocket. Plus, an onboard nuclear reactor can provide constant, reliable energy to the crew. One really interesting reveal from China's Mars plan is their intention to build something called a sky ladder. This is essentially a kind of elevator to space. You build a physical structure from the ground that extends all the way to low Earth orbit. And this way, you wouldn't need the massive energy of a rocket engine to transport mass to orbit. You would just run it up the elevator. Obviously, building something that tall would require a level of engineering that is beyond anything we've ever seen, and the Chinese have the intention of building this with a space-age material known as carbon nanotubes. The composition of this material is like a group of nanometer-sized tubes that are made up of hexagonal lattice work of carbon atoms. It's very complicated stuff, the main takeaway being that this material is both incredibly strong and incredibly light at the same time and can support structures that are several miles in length. All that to say that the Chinese wouldn't even be talking about this kind of stuff if they didn't seriously intend to put a massive quantity of stuff into space. Elon Musk is working on accomplishing the same goal. His plan is to use a gigantic overpowered rocket to get his stuff up there instead of a space elevator. But they're both onto the same scheme. Get mass into orbit so they can ship it off to Mars. And sure, building a space elevator and a Mars colony is going to sound like pure science fiction right now, but you can't underestimate or understate China's ability to get things done. China has the world's fastest growing major economy that has been averaging gains of 10% year over year for the last 30 years. China is the world's largest manufacturing economy and is the largest global exporter of goods. Half of all metal used in the world is consumed in China. And yeah, that does all come with a great cost to both humanity and the environment. There are undoubtedly some absolutely terrible abuses of human rights and freedoms going on over there, as there are in many parts of the world, including our own home country of Canada, where there is still an ongoing and baffling mistreatment of the native people whose land was colonized to build this country. So yeah, the downside to progress is not lost on us. We fully acknowledge that. Anyway, we've already seen the Chinese bring that unstoppable momentum to their space program. The Tiangong Space Station is probably the best example of this. While NASA and Russia are still squeezing every last drop of usability that they can from their ancient relic of a space station, the Chinese just went ahead and started building a whole new one on their own. 
The Tiangong is not nearly as big and complex as the ISS on the outside, but since the modules of the Chinese station are wider in diameter and the technology is more efficient and compact due to modern design, there is actually going to be much more functional space inside than the ISS. NASA is eyeing 2030 as the point where they are finally able to move into a new space station that they expect to be built by a private contractor, although no such construction has actually begun. So we know that China can move fast, they can build effectively, and they are not afraid of trampling people to get ahead. And that makes them a genuine contender to begin populating Mars long before anyone else is capable of doing the same. There is one man standing in the way of a Chinese dominion on Mars, and that of course is Elon Musk and the team at SpaceX. As you all know, Elon is the richest man in the world and the owner of the most cutting edge and successful aerospace company in operation today, which is SpaceX. So Elon has a lot going for him, and he also comes with a strong track record of getting things done. He began his career in the mid-90s as a broke immigrant, single-handedly building software companies by working day and night and sleeping on his office floor. He eventually reached the point where he was able to sell his stake in PayPal for $180 million. Now, the man could have happily called it quits and retired at that point, but he instead chose to spend all of his new fortune by funding SpaceX, Tesla, SolarCity, and the recreation of his hairline. With a full head of hair and three fledgling companies under his wings, Elon set out to change the world. By all accounts, Elon's plan should have failed miserably, but it didn't. The man made it happen through sheer force of will. There's really no other explanation, aside from him being the luckiest son of a bitch to ever walk the earth. And just in case being the most successful entrepreneur and richest person in the world wasn't enough, for Elon's magnum opus, he will extend the light of consciousness to the stars and establish a self-sustaining human city on the planet Mars. And again, it sounds like science fiction, but you can't underestimate this dude. Unfortunately, Elon has been pretty slim on details of his actual Mars colony. We know that his aim is to transport about 1 million metric tons of stuff from the Earth to Mars, if we're going to make the base on Mars truly self-sustaining. That means that if supplies from the Earth were to permanently stop, then Mars would continue on indefinitely. And to accomplish this, SpaceX is building the Starship, the first ever rocket capable of lifting over 100 metric tons to Earth orbit in a single launch. Elon envisions having a fleet of over 1,000 of these ships in service, running in constant transit between the Earth and Mars. He said that there will be 1,000 times more mass shipped into orbit per year by Starship than all other rockets in the world combined. How about the timeline, though? Can Elon beat China to the punch? I mean, maybe. Elon does this thing where he vastly underestimates the amount of time that things will take to get done in real life. Less than 10 years ago, Elon was saying that he would have people on Mars by 2025. Now, we know that's not going to happen, but he is still clinging to the hope that he can land at least one of his Starship rockets on Mars in 2025. That rocket has yet to even reach low Earth orbit in 2022, but Elon thinks he can get it to Mars in three years. And he could be right. After that, he's been talking about going straight from the first successful landing into crewed missions to Mars. That could mean as early as 2027. But right now, Elon seems to be gunning hard for people on Mars by 2030 at the latest. His whole philosophy is that we are about to open the window of possibility to begin expanding humanity to become a multi-planetary species. This is the first time that window has opened in the 4 billion year history of the Earth. And we have no idea how long it will remain open for. It might be a long time, but it might also be a very short time. So we have to move as fast as possible, as soon as possible, to make sure that we don't miss our chance. It's all very existential cosmic stuff. Anyway, there was a recent Twitter post where Elon said that he expects it will take between 20 and 30 years from the first human landing to the level of being self-sustaining. But 
He's also basing that calculation on a pretty staggering population growth. So to hit Elon's timeline expectations, we would need to put 1 million people on Mars. And over a two to three decade plan, we would need to transfer an average of 100,000 people per launch window, which happens about once every two years. Now that's a lot of people, and this is no small feat. This is truly some Noah's Ark level business. So who do you think will actually pull it off? We've got the utilitarian brute force and dedication of China versus Elon Musk's glowing vision for the future of humanity beyond the great filter. Or is this all just high level fantasy? Drop your theories below. Meet us back here every week for more updates on everything aerospace industry and interstellar exploration related. Make sure to give the video a thumbs up today if you liked it. That really helps us out for real. And subscribe to the Space Race for more videos just like this. We do one long form essay and one news update every week. And if you'd like more, we've got two more on the screen for you right now.